In the previous episode, the survivor team ventured out in search of food but fell into an ambush by the Reapers. Amidst the chaos, Daryl spotted one of the Reapers entering a dense forest and immediately pursued. Guided by his loyal dog, Daryl arrived at an abandoned house, where the Reaper was scouring the hallway, seemingly searching for him. Daryl picked up a stone from the ground and threw it in the distance to divert the Reaper's attention. The man was indeed drawn to the sound and moved in that direction. Daryl silently circled around from behind, planning to ambush the Reapers. However, just as Daryl closed in, the Reaper seemed to vanish into thin air. Daryl became wary, scanning his surroundings, and at that moment, he sensed faint footsteps behind him. The Reapers were slowly closing in on him. And so, they engaged in a fierce struggle. Daryl seized the opportunity and firmly held onto the man's hand, preventing him from using his knife. The Reaper was equally strong, locking Daryl down and relentlessly attacking his back with elbow strikes. They grappled without either gaining the upper hand, refusing to release their grips. In their tussle, they rolled down a slope, finally separating. Daryl's dog also took advantage of the chaos and rushed in, biting the man's thigh, causing him to scream in agony. No! No! Meanwhile, two more Reapers approached from behind as Daryl stood with his back to them. The middle Reaper seemed to anticipate something. After hurling a throwing knife, Daryl wasted no time and sprinted away. It wasn't the moment for a protracted fight. The next morning, the Reapers were still in the vicinity searching for Daryl but unable to locate him. Instead, they found his loyal dog. Daryl hadn't gone far. He used zombie blood and flesh to camouflage his face before embarking on a search for his canine companion. This faithful dog had been his closest companion for many years. Suddenly, he heard the distant barking of his dog and immediately rushed towards the source. Three minutes later, Daryl crossed a grassy field to reach the sound's origin. His dog was indeed there, but the situation was somewhat precarious because there was a reaper nearby. Strangely, the dog appeared obedient beside this individual. He said let him go. The reapers didn't reply but took off their masks. It was a blonde woman and she was quite good looking. The moment Daryl laid eyes on her, his mind went blank and his stern expression softened. This woman turned out to be his girlfriend. I never thought I'd see you again. Yeah, I thought the same. Let's rewind time seven years ago. Does everyone remember this river? Rick blew up that bridge and hasn't been heard from since. Daryl couldn't believe his best friend was really gone, so he kept searching relentlessly. Two years passed, and still, there was no sign of Rick. Then one day, as Daryl was about to return to his makeshift shelter, he heard the distant barking of a dog. A cute little pup emerged from the woods, not afraid of Daryl but rather happily bounding towards him. Daryl picked up the puppy, and they played for a while. Where'd you come from? When the puppy seemed tired, it wriggled out of Daryl's arms and headed back in the direction it came from. Clearly having an owner, Daryl didn't force the puppy to stay and return to his shelter. He resumed studying the map of the river, marking X's on places he had already searched. Today, he had eliminated another location. Daryl couldn't help but sigh and wonder, Rick, my best friend, where are you? Daryl is the most emotional person on the show. There's no one like him who can wander around alone to find his brother. He wandered alone, using the sky as his roof, the earth as his bed, and enduring hunger as a daily companion. Worse still, he had to endure harsh storms, his flimsy shelter feeling like paper. Every time he faced such conditions, he gritted his teeth and persevered. One year later, Daryl encountered the same dog on the road, but now it had grown significantly. The dog seemed anxious, as if it needed help. Daryl suspected that its owner might be in trouble. Following the dog, he arrived at a residential area. Two zombies lurked outside one of the houses, and there was commotion inside. Armed with his crossbow, Daryl burst into the house and found a zombie. Suddenly, a woman rushed out. I asked you a question. I'm leaving. By nightfall, Daryl found himself bound to a chair. The woman tossed the zombie's body outside and continued to interrogate Daryl about why he had come here. Daryl reluctantly says your dog found me. I just wanted to come and help. The woman, however, sneered. You're tied up here now. Your life is in my hands. Do you really think I need your help? Daryl fell silent. 
Not wanting to explain further, but women are so strange. She puts the gun down when she sees Daryl's indifference. Then she cut the rope with a knife and told him to get out of there. Six months later, Daryl still hadn't found Rick, and a scar adorned his face. The dog would occasionally seek him out, like an old friend reuniting after a long absence. Each time, Daryl would escort the dog back home. As a result, he became increasingly familiar with the woman. Another eight months passed, and Daryl was still without any sign of Rick. At times, when he caught fish, he would secretly leave them at the woman's doorstep. Upon discovering this, she came to his temporary shelter to express her gratitude and noticed Daryl's frostbitten hands. With winter approaching and temperatures dropping, she extended an invitation for Daryl to spend the night at her house. It was on this evening that the woman finally let her guard down and shared her past. Her name was Leah, and she had secluded herself here for a year. Devastated by the loss of her son, Daryl's arrival had disrupted the tranquility of her life. As the days passed, their relationship became extraordinary. They fished together and lay on rocks. Studying maps together, the hearts of two wanderers gradually came together, and they even took the final step. However, ten months later, Daryl expressed his desire to venture farther in search of Rick. He assured Leah that he would return in a few days, but Leah was very upset. It's not that she's preventing Daryl from going out, but rather that this man's heart seems to have no place for her. His mind is consumed with thoughts of finding his brother, whom Leah believes is already dead. She wonders where she stands in all of this. In the end, Leah left the decision to Daryl. Ultimately, Daryl set out on his mission to find Rick. As it had become his unwavering duty, after five days of looking outside, Daryl still hadn't found any sign of Rick. However, when he returned to the cabin, he found it in disarray, and there was no sign of Leah. The framed photograph of Leah and her son had been taken. Daryl couldn't help but understand that Leah had likely left. At that moment, the dog emerged, indicating that Leah hadn't taken it with her. Intending it to be a companion for Daryl, Daryl suddenly felt a sense of emptiness in his heart, uncertain whether Leah would ever return. So, in a place known only to the two of them, he hid some food and left a note with a map leading to the Alexandria safe zone. The message read, You are my ultimate destination. If you come back, come find me. After that, Daryl took the dog and left. People are indeed strange. Often, it's only after losing something that they truly appreciate its value. Daryl never saw Leah again. Oh boy, we won't get her back. Then it was Carol who found him and asked Daryl to look after Henry as he studied medicine at the hilltop, only to run into the whisperers. Watch this. Too. After dealing with the threat of the whisperers, Daryl returned to the small cabin with Carol, but it was deserted and there was no sign of human habitation. The dog seemed to catch a scent, becoming visibly agitated as it focused on a wooden board. Carol had to pry the boards open, and this was where Daryl had put the note. The dog retrieved one of its former toys and ran outside. Carol found the note, bearing only Daryl's handwriting indicating that Leah hadn't returned. Daryl felt a sense of regret, realizing that he might never see Leah again in his lifetime. He just didn't realize that after three years, they would be meeting in such a situation. Leah had become a member of the Reapers, seemingly holding a significant position within the group. It explained why the dog hadn't run away but sat obediently by her side. What are you doing out here? You alone? See anybody with me? Leah appeared more distant now, wanting to know the origins of the people Daryl had been with. She even aimed a gun at her former lover, just like their initial encounter. Naturally, Daryl couldn't reveal that Alexandria's safe zone existed, as it would jeopardize the community. He stated that he was still a loner. Gonna go. Come on, boy. Come on. Facing Daryl's call, the dog remained motionless on the ground. Well, that's funny. What's well, funny? I always thought he liked you better. Look, I don't know who you're fighting, but I am not part of it. We're going. Come on! Suddenly, two more members of the Reapers emerged from the surrounding woods. Daryl was captured by this mysterious organization and taken to the Reapers' headquarters. Through the slit in the hood he wore over his head, Daryl could see Leah and the dog following. 
Along with the body hanging in the air, the Reapers patrolling the neighborhood also looked over, because Leah's rank in the Reapers is very high. Why did Leah suddenly bring back a dog today? In the end, Daryl was brought to a shipping container and tied to a chair, seemingly prepared for a harsh interrogation, 